Mr. Tim Dell, I think I left my three-ring binder around there somewhere. Not going to do too, maybe not, maybe it's not there anymore. We'll just kind of make it all happen without my three-ring binder. Where do we put it? You know, it's not easy being an absent-minded professor. But we can really do this without it, so that's a good thing. I got a couple announcements that I, I do need to make a, along the way here as we go. Or first of all, welcome to Lakeside Lutheran Church. We're glad you're here. How many of you had to hunker down and find shelter this morning in a closet or somewhere else? So if you're up at Northport, I guess it was um, uh, pretty rough um, for a, a bunch of people or Inglewood as well. So we're so glad that um, you're safe and you can make it with us well. And hopefully there's no one bad weather for anyone uh, along the way. Um, I, I think it may be back in the office area because my wife made me go make copies so I can blame her. And um, making copies, that's what I wanted to, to mention as well. Um, we're so glad that um, uh, there's over 100 people that are doing the Bible in 90 days. And um, make sure you got a sheet that kind of walks you through that. And my problem is I printed off the children's version. And so, so if you did get the children's version... That's kind of like my version, but anyway, um, you can just grab one of these, and I can't believe there's going to be over 100 people that are going to be in God's Word on a daily basis for, for 90 days. Now, if it doesn't work out for you, you can do this in 190 days. It's okay. God doesn't mind, because that's a lot of reading to, to go with um, right away from the beginning, but you know, when you start doing it multiple times over the years, it gets um, pretty neat, and it really does a lot of great things, So, because that's kind of going with our theme for the year of 2022, the great sending of the Florida Georgia District, that God sent us a Savior in order to send us with his love. And what we're really trying to do with this is try to get people connected in God's Word on a daily basis. Because when we have that foundation of being in God's Word, that is going to be so wonderful to us. The world seeks to fill us with, with the stuff of the world. As a church with God, we want to fill you with things that are from heaven. And, and that's a beautiful thing. Um, today in our service today, you may notice that there's some crosses back there for you to pick up. We'll talk about that when we get into uh, the message as well. We do have the celebration of the sacrament of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're, we do communion on the traditional way with tables. You'll be ushered up and you can kind of take your table and receive communion and put your um, um, cup back um, on the tray up here for us. If you don't want to come forward and you feel more comfortable staying back, hopefully our ushers or elders will have eyes for that, and we can bring communion out to you um, as well. Um, as, I don't know if anyone's in the parking lot today or not, but all these things are designed so that we continue the distribution of the good news of Jesus Christ in the hearts and lives of God's people. So um, I think that's all the nonsense that I really had to say or share. I don't think I'm missing anything. Hey! Thank you, Bill. Where was it? In my office, that's right. Right where I left it, I'm sure. Um, you can take, take, take it for me. So, um, we're going to have that theme of the crucifixion. So, no, it's not Good Friday, but we'll talk about that when we hit the sermon. So, we're going to start off with our opening hymn. And um, as Christ is our cornerstone, if anything else is your cornerstone, get rid of it. So, let us sing. Um, please rise for our opening hymn. Mm.
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The peace of the Lord be with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with Him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Let us therefore confess our sins to God our Father. Merciful God, we confess that we've lived surrounded by the darkness of sin. Our lives are spent in the darkness of the fallen world by our own sin in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done as well as the good we have failed to do. Deliver us from this darkness and grant us your forgiveness by the light of your Son's saving death on the cross and the power of his resurrection. Amen. Jesus Christ, the light of the world, opens heaven before us and brings us life again. By the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We pray together. Father God, it is my heart's desire to encounter you as a gracious God described in the Bible. Thanks to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, that is possible. Now, by your Holy Spirit, help me to gather to know you better and better now and forever. Amen. Before, um, you may be seated. Before we jump right into our listens, one of the things that um, we're placing into our, our worship services is, is the call to listen. Now, this is a, a practice done in, in the church going back into the Israelites' 
thousands and thousands of years before they were gathering together, there would be the call to God's people, it's time to listen to the Word of God being read. It was a very important thing um, in the church. And of course, our reformation of the church spun that even deeper with that great interpretation and proclamation of God's Word for, for the hearer. And so the call to listen reminds us not to be digging around with anything else, but this is the Word of God coming and being spoken to us, the very precious gift of God. So we may have these in our services now and on occasion. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living Word. The first reading is from the third chapter of Ezekiel, beginning at the 10th verse. Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak to you, receive in your heart and hear with your ears. And go to the exiles, to your people, and speak to them and say to them, Thus says the Lord, whether they are here or refuse to hear. Then the Spirit lifted me up, and I heard behind me the voice of a great earthquake. Blessed be the glory of the Lord from its place. It was the sound of the wings of the living creatures as they touched one another, and the sound of the wheels beside them, and the sound of a great earthquake. The Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit the hand of the Lord being strong upon me. And I came to the exiles at Tel Abid, who were dwelling by the Shabar channel. And I sat where they were dwelling, and I sat there overwhelmed among them seven days. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from the first chapter of 1 Corinthians, beginning at the 18th verse. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John the 19th chapter, beginning at the 16th verse. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
God's grace and mercy and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who grants us the forgiveness of sins. Our text today is going to come from St. John 19. But before we jump into that, I've got to say, did anyone wonder why didn't we sing all the verses to lift high the cross, right? Only one person wondered why. A couple others. Stay tuned. Okay, we're not done yet. So there, because, like, oh, yeah, that's a tough one to split up. But as we close our service, we'll um, finish up that song in their last couple verses that really belt it up because we're talking about this. Now, why are we talking about Christ crucified here on the second Sunday after Epiphany? This should be Good Friday. And I, and I know one person for sure in our congregation, he's a friend of mine, Dennis. I don't want to call you out, but he's sitting right over that area. And um, Dennis is saying, this is not the text for this Sunday. And I would kind of think that he would know that because his son's a classmate of mine, a pastor out on the East Coast. And he's like, what are these verses? What's with this earthquake and Ezekiel and Christ crucified with Paul and, and Pilate sending Jesus to be crucified? This is Lenten language. Well, as we are walking through the great sending of this year of 2022, and we're looking at, at the Florida Georgia District stuff that, that we're doing, it, they, they started us off with Easter, the resurrection of Jesus, and then they moved us into who do you say Jesus is, which is an amazing thing that we're all ready to say who Jesus is, and now it's kind of there with the crucifixion, because without the crucifixion, we preach Christ crucified, we've got nothing to talk about. So if we're people that are going to be sent in the name of Christ to our spouse, to the people, our homes, to the people we drive with, the people we play with, the people we walk around with, we've got to know our stuff. We just can't have information. It's got to be our identity. And so we get this text. So Pilate is the he here. So Pilate delivered Jesus over to them, the, the guards and those who are going to do the crucifixion, to be executed, to be crucified, to be taken care of. He is sent to the cross. Now, what does this cross mean for us when we see this cross? When we see the cross of Jesus, what, what, what comes to mind for you? When you see it on, on a steeple, you may see it in, in a, as a bookmark. You, you may have it on a piece of jewelry. Uh, what do you see this? The pastors are to wear them in the worship service. What does this mean for you? What does it connect with? So it, it comes a part of our life. And so it was, Jesus was crucified. The cross takes us right there. He was delivered over to be crucified, and so he was crucified. Now, we all kind of can go around our communities and, and, and discuss people. You can go to Wawa or to Walmart or to Aldi's or wherever you go, want to go, and ask people in the restaurants, you go, what does the cross mean to you? And it's starting to lose its meaning across the board. You know, it's just kind of a, a piece of um, equipment. It can be uh, earrings or whatever people wear because it's cool. It, is, is it really communicating what it, it's supposed to communicate? Because over time, the world works hard to take away what God has given us. So what do you say that it means? If you were to have a conversation with someone who is in third grade and say, let's talk about the cross. What are you going to share with them? But now suddenly that third grader is in college. And the messages that are being sent to the ones in college is way different than what the third grader is being exposed to. What do you say to them? Or how do we talk about it with people in our lives as we're playing cards and doing things and having meals and going about our, our business, wherever it may take us. What are we sharing about this cross? And what does it really mean to us? Well, let's get into it a little bit more deeply here than what we'd probably share with a third grader or maybe a college kid or even people on the street, but it gives us this foundation how can the victory of God, of Jesus, come from execution? 
How can this victory that is delivered to us come from an execution? It doesn't make sense. That's why uh, Paul is saying this is a stumbling block. We don't get this. Death is death. And where does victory come from death? How can it be? So this is the power of the cross. The cross moves us from information to a transformation in us by the gospel victory of the cross. In our words, in 2022, we like to say, the empty cross. Because remember, the whole concept of that cross is this is the place that Jesus went in our place. When God looked down to the world and he saw you before you were even created, he saw you belonged on the cross for an eternity. He realized his creation has run amok, they have run afoul, and now what is in store for them is not the flood that destroyed that. It is the crucifixion of eternity. It's another way to describe hell, the eternal crucifixion of body and soul on the cross. And so God looks down and he sees your crucifixion on the cross and out of grace and of mercy and of love, these three great big words, mercy, grace, and love, he sees you on the cross and he says, no, I'm not having that. That's not how it's going to be. And so he glances over and he sees Jesus and he says, now in the fullness of time you must go because we're not having this. We're not having those who are made in my image be an eternity on the cross. So he takes the execution on the cross in our spot. And then suddenly the term Good Friday arrives. Because now he has taken our spot. He's taken our spot on the cross. And this is our identity. God took my place on the cross through his son, Jesus. And he's no longer there. And we now are in victory. So what does the cross really mean to you? Are you able to say that it's a piece of information that happened in history that's debated? Or you can say it's the cross that has transformed me from someone concerned about my money, my schedule, my time, into a servant of God because of the blood of his Son. And I will remain steadfast in that transformation despite the world telling me, no, you need to be concerned about your money, your schedule, and all the things that are really important to you. So who delivered Jesus over to be crucified? Well, we get this Pilate. So Pilate had him delivered over. Well, he was conjoled by the, the, the crowd. Crucify him, crucify him. We have no king but Caesar. You know, so it could be labeled to the people. But who delivered Jesus over to be crucified? Will anyone raise your hand that it was you? It was me. I'm the one that sent him over. It was my sin. And when you realize that we're the ones that sent him to be crucified, that transformation from information to the child of God and the great deed that he's done because we delivered him over because of our sin. When it was our turn to go up on the cross, he steps in and pushes us to the side. Oh no, I got this covered. He had it covered for us. And he took on that that crucifixion. And he did it in this humble inspiration. This humble inspiration. But I want to go back one more time to who delivered Jesus over to the cross. And of course, we can blame all that. And we can raise our hand and say it was our sin or whatever. But I have to remember the person who really delivered him over to the cross was himself. He's the one that went in our place. He says, not you, you are a child of God. And so this humble inspiration came upon him, and he says, I'm going to do this. 
He could have jumped ship right when he was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights when the angels came and said, oh, I'm not going to go with this. He could have jumped ship before that, before I'm not going to go in down to Bethlehem. Now, this isn't going to work out for me that I'm going to have to give my body and blood. Judas, maybe, you know, let's just stop this whole thing. No, no, none of this crazy what-ifs about selfishness. In humility, Jesus made himself the lowest. And he was inspired to do that because of the love so that he, we would not be on that cross. So this humble inspiration... And this, this whole crucifixion indicates that God is victorious and that victory becomes ours. Because he takes it on for us. This crucifixion indicates our victory because the sin is taken care of. Now remember, your sin, your, your selfishness, your um, selfish ambition, your idolatry, uh, your painful words, uh, things that you should be doing that you didn't do, all the confessions that we've confessed for years and years and years, we have um, taken them all up and we found the crevices in the crown of thorns. We found the crevices in his back where he was beaten. We found it and we stuffed them in. And we kept stuffing the sin of the whole world into Jesus. That yes, even the earthquakes were arriving because of the pain of sin upon Jesus. It was so horrible that God had to turn away and not look at him. His own godness in Jesus on the cross. And when God turns away, he sees you forgiven. He sees you having the victory. He sees his people, the exiles of the church that are still in faith that Ezekiel went to see in sadness because of their sin. Ezekiel is no longer crying for seven days. Ezekiel now has been raised up with great joy as well as the church today. Because we have all of this in Christ. What does your sin look like? We don't know anymore because it's gone as far as the east is from the west. The wounds that skewed him are healed. And so our sin is gone. We now talk about the victory of Jesus. And now we are the church that trusts in the crucifixion. This is our transformation. It is just not a, a little bit of a mouthpiece or lip service. Yeah, Jesus. No, this is our identity that will never stop us, that will keep us going and going as, as the world tries to take away the word husband and wife and replace it with partner. It it doesn't go because God has given us those terms. As the world tries to take away our male and female, husband and wife, it doesn't flow because these are the terms that are coming from heaven. It is only the abomination of sin that attacks Christ himself that we see in those capacities. So we trust in the victory of the crucifixion and we carry on his mission given to us. Because just as Christ was sent to the crucifixion, we now are sent by the crucifixion. As you came in this morning, you had an opportunity to pick up a cross, maybe a larger one, maybe a smaller one. But here's what I want with that cross for you, if you so want one. Some of them are small enough to put in your pocket or whatever, and, and we've kind of talked about what it means to you, but now I want this kind of this cross to be a reminder to you. Think of someone in your life, maybe two or three people. Maybe it's five or six, or maybe some of you, it may be great more, but think of a person that has not been transformed by the cross, but is still dancing in information. It's still all about themselves. I want you to pray for that person. Pray for them every time you come across that cross. Maybe it's somewhere in your house or maybe it's in your car or wherever. And pray for that person that somehow, some way, 
that the light of Christ will transform them from information to the crucifixion and victory in Christ Jesus. This cross is that reminder of our sin is gone and placed upon Jesus who is able to overcome it. And Jesus wants this for every person in the world. He does not want one to fall through the cracks. And he has given this gift of the cross to the church to communicate. Not big, long messages and big, long conversations with huge words of, or memorized Bible verses, but a simple, loving heart that goes out to the person or persons that you are praying for. That somehow the message of the gospel will do its hard work as it's done on us through the power of the Holy Spirit. So we have been sent by that crucifixion because we've been delivered from our crucifixion. Why in the world would you get up in the morning and it's windy and raining and make your way to church? Because I'm not being crucified. I am not going to die on that cross for an eternity. My Savior took my spot. You're going to try and keep me from worshiping the guy who took my spot on the cross from eternity. Get out my way. I'm on my way because he has delivered me to everlasting life. That's transformation of the heart. That's life changing. The great sending sent Jesus to the cross so that we will never be sent to the cross. We are sent with the cross in the name of the resurrection, in the name of our victory, his execution for our transformation. That is the message of eternity for the church. That's what makes us smile every day. We have Jesus. In his name, amen. The peace that passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds focused on Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. Please rise as we get right into the confession of our mutual faith and the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, be God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with my Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Join me in praying. Dear Father in heaven, I thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus, who gave his life for me. I rejoice in your love and forgiveness and pray that I may be a bold witness of your love to those who do not yet know Jesus. Grant us your peace and joy in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Let us pray. 
Gracious Heavenly Father, we gather in your holy name today, lifting up the good news of Jesus Christ, the great joy that has come unto us, all the peace and glory that has given us your, your mighty gift. And we want to pray for all those who need your present care. We want to especially pray for, for Dr. Tim Furnish, who's in Woodstock, Georgia, and Reverend Jacob Rodsons, who is in Lake Worth, Florida. These pastors are dealing with, with um, as missionaries and, and, and pastors in, in the battle of depression and self-doubt in, in jail ministry. Uh, they wake up heading to the jails to bring the good news of Jesus Christ in the lives of people. We ask that the Lord be with them and bless them as they move along. Lord, we want to pray for all those who are making decisions for our country, those who are working in our communities as well, uh, those who are protecting and um, keeping us uh, uh, in, in peace, not only in our own communities, but across the world, that your reign would be in with and above them and keeping them safe and united in your word as well. Lord, have your word run rampant through the power of your Holy Spirit as the cross is delivered to thousands upon thousands, moving them from unbelief to belief moving them from information to the transformation that only the cross can do in our lives. Lord, continue us to build us up as your dear children as you grow in deeper love with you and in fervent love towards one another by your very body and blood that we have today. In your hands, O oh Lord, we commend for all whom we pray, trusting in your mercy especially raising up those, including Helen Van Hoff and Bob and Nancy Lang, Sue Denhart, Alice Johnson, Sue Hatch, Jane Herring, John Raymond, Janelle Werner, Fred Rowe, Kurt Rowe, and Linda Rayner, Jesse Schof, Tom Lally, Andrew Lindquist, and, and Mark McGrath as well. Lord, have each of these people surrounded with healing, your presence, and your power. Raise up their spirits with the good news that Jesus Christ is risen for them, and death has no power over us, and sin is is gone forever. These things we all bring into your holy name. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we hear our choir.
Please rise for our communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good right and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, he made known to the nations in your Son. In him, being found in the substance of your, our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. All the brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world, we are united in a specific prayer given by Jesus himself to his disciples. We pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not in temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, on the night in which he is betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and he gave to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given and shed for you for the remission of all of your sins. This do as often as you eat of it in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, he took the cup after supper, and when he blessed it, he gave to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world.
Please rise to our post-communion collect. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout the days of pilgrimage, that on the day of, co of his coming, we may together with all the saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, I'm going to have the congregation please be seated. Uh, i got a, a little bit here. Please indulge me just a little bit. We do have some newlyweds in our congregation today, and I just want to take a moment to um, give them our blessing as well. So, Dennis, would you bring your lovely bride forward? You're going to get a special newly. Dennis, Sheltanis, bring your wife right forward. I know you're, le you're leaving today so I can get away with this. Walk her down the aisle. These are our newest, or they're newlyweds for six months now. There you go. Come on down the aisle. I, I've known Dennis, and he's worshipped with us numerous times since I've moved down here. We've become, I have Iowa connections, and they're going through, and they stopped in today, and he says, this is my wife. <laughs> what do you mean? Um, and so, um, and you have to remind me of every name I know. Sandy. And so I'm um, so glad that the Lord has brought the two of you together as you both have lost your spouses previously and now in grace of time to have this fellowship together. And we here at Lakeside want to give you your blessing as you continue your travels uh, with one another. The Lord bless you in your marriage. May be strong and firm in the true faith of our Savior who has given us everlasting life. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, go with his peace. Amen. Okay, now we'll have the rest of the congregation please stand as you get your benediction as well as we go out uh, to take care of the Lord's business and come back next week to get pumped up and said, yes, he's risen for me. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.